Minasang Konnichiwa, Wadashua Yu des. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Shongsi, and this is the first time I'm representing my company speaking internationally. So if you cannot tell, I'm very nervous right now. Um, but let's begin. So my name is Shongsi, and I work at Suse under the Hardware Enablement Taipei Taiwan team. And I mainly work on BPF, but that's not the topic of the talk today. Today, I'm going to talk about a brief walkthrough of how to work with OSS fuzz reported issues. And also a bit about how to submit patch to the Linux kernel mailing list, LKML for short. But my main focus today will really be the OSS fuzz report issue. So let's dig into it. The journey begin here. And at SUSE, we have a dedicated security team. They will monitor and track security issue for us. So it was a normal hot and sunny Monday because it was always hot and sunny at where I live and that's why I'm wearing this. And anyway, so I got a report from the SUSE security team saying there's an issue with the BPF. I'm the package maintainer, so therefore I have to look into it. And they forward me the CV number, and so I can look into it. The first thing I check out is the CV description that's here. And it says that libbpf version 0.6 has some buffer overflow in, in the BPF object open function. That is quite specific, but not enough for me to fix the issue. So I keep on looking. There's this reference section in the CV report. So I followed that link, and this brings me to somewhere else. So I could see that there is some information that I already know, but also some more new information that I don't yet understand, and also a few links to this website called OSS Fuzz. So that brings a question. What is OSS Fuzz? Looking into the documentation, it says that it's a free service that runs faster for open source project. And it's a service that was started by Google back in 2016, and later it's done in collaboration with the Open Security uh, Foundation, which is Open SSF for short. Now, all that is good, but the, the problem is that I do not know what fuzzer is at that point. So I had to look into it. So what are fuzzers? Well, I find that instead of saying what they are, it's easier to describe them by asking like, what problem are they trying to solve? And the problem that they're trying to solve is around bugs. If you think about it, to fix bug, there's actually two parts of the equation. First, the bug has to be discovered, and only then can the bug be fixed. So this raises the question. Can the bug be discovered before the user, before the developer, or even the security researcher sees it? And basically, can the bug be discovered with minimum human involvement? And as you have guessed, the answer is yes, and the fuzzer is one way of doing so. And briefly, the fuzzer works like this. So fuzzer is a piece of software that feeds random input into a target. The target in my case is libbpf. And when it feeds this random piece of input, it also checks for unexpected behaviors. For example, program crashing will be an unexpected behaviors. And when such things happen, it's a bug. And we have found one. So that's basically how it works. <laughs> and knowing how fuzzer works and knowing what a fuzzer is, we can look back at OSS Fuzz. So it's a free service that runs faster. In other words, it's a free service that tries to find bugs in open source software. And actually, it focuses more on the security issue of open source software. So back to this, this OSS Fuzz report. Well, I know now that this is a bug report, of course, but secondly, I also know that this is actually a bug report that is filed by software. So unlike your usual bug report filed by user, where you can interact with them and ask for more input 
and ask more question, we don't get that benefit in this specific issue. But that said, OSS Fuzz actually provides us with a lot of helpful tools to debug this issue. But to get into the details, we really had to get our hands dirty. And the first thing is that I want to see the issue for myself. With that, I can kind of get into more details. And OSS Fuzz helps me by providing a reproducer test case. So what is reproducer? Well, back to our introduction of Fuzzer. Fuzzer feeds random input into a target and wait for a bug to happen. Well, this random piece of bug, uh, random piece of input is the reproducer for such bug, which means that if I run this reproducer provided by OSS Fuzz, I should see the same issue again. The first thing is that uh, I first need to set the, to run the reproducer, I have to first set up the environment. And it's actually quite trivial. So the first thing to do is clone OSS Fuzz. And the next thing is to run a OSS Fuzz provided helper to build the image. Here I have to provide a project name, which is of course libbpf. And this will try to get some container image with, which could take a while depending on your network speed it may take 10 to 30 minutes. And this build a container image for building libbpf. So it only creates this container image without libbpf yet. It's just the build environment. So the next thing I have to do is clone libbpf. And with that done, I can now finally build libbpf itself with a fuzzer. But for that, I have to give it three arguments. First is, of course, the project name, the BPF, and then the source to the BPF. And lastly, the sanitizer. So what is sanitizer? Again, referring back to our fuzzer introduction, we have some check for unexpected behaviors. And the sanitizer actually are the checks. So since there's quite a bit of unexpected behavior, different type of them. We also have different type of sanitizers. For example, for uninitialized memory use, we have the memory sanitizer to detect them. And for the shift out of bound, there's the undefined sanitizer. But for the flow, we had used the address sanitizer. And there's also one for data race, which is the threat sanitizer. So you don't you really need to know all this because OSS Fuzz report actually tells you that. In our case, we're using the address sanitizers, so that's what I'll use. And with that, it builds libbpf alongside the fuzzer. Now we have completed the environment setup, basically just four steps, and I can move on to running the reproducers. For that, I just download the link provided in the report, rename it just to make it easier. And then again, using this OSS Fuzz helper script, I gave it the reproduce command. And libbpf is the project name again. Reproducer pass will be the one that I just downloaded. And there's also a fuzz target name. So fuzz target is basically what interface or what function the fuzzer is testing. And again, this can be seen in the report. We'll be using the BPF object fuzzer in this case. And actually, BP, libbpf only have one fuzz target, so it's always this one. And we put that into the argument. And now I can start, start to see something. So there's this address sanitizer report saying there's a heat buffer overflow. So if you think about it, it's just like six step going from knowing nothing to reproducing the issue locally on your machine. So I'll say that's a very nice thing to have. And with the issue reproduced, the next thing is to try to diagnose what's wrong. And the sanitizer and OSS fuzz actually helps you a lot with it. 
the, the sanitizer report contains a lot of information. The first thing it contains is exactly at which function and which line of source code does the issue happen. So we can tell, we can see that it's here. But this heap buffer of overflow issue actually requires more digging. You need to know the root cause by looking at where it is allocated. And for that, you look at the second part of the address sanitizer report. And I can see that it occurs in the same function, just a bit higher up. So I can tell that while the heap buffer flow happens here, the, the memory was actually allocated here using this some section count. And I can tell that the section count comes from elsewhere, from another field. So this is a point that it's start to get too specific into the issue itself. So for the next part, I'll kind of just skim through and mainly for time constraint and not digging too much into the detail. But in short, with just print F magic, I realized this number is zero. And looking, looking into the spec, there's a part of the ELF spec saying that such a number can be zero. And in such case, the real value is stored elsewhere. So I have to look somewhere else. And just so happened that I could use some helper functions for it. So I could use this elf get section header number and to retrieve the real number that I'm looking for. So I apply the change. And the next thing I want to do is to see if the reproducer still could trigger the issue. So I had to rebuild the fuzzers again, rebuild libpf, because it's compiled and I changed the code. So compiled it. And the next thing is to try to reproduce again. So this time I see that no address sanitizer report came out, which means I have fixed the issue. So all is great. So the next thing is just to commit. And that concludes the first part of my talk. The first part about how to use OSS Fuzz. I hope it's uh, clear enough that it's quite easy to use and you can surely, well, not surely, but most of the time you should be able to get find the OSS Fuzz report and reproduce the issue locally on your machine. And now I'll move on to the second part, submitting a fix. So if you just ask, uh, as a random project, like where should I submit the changes? You can say GitHub and you'll be right like 90% of the time, but not for libbpf. So although libbpf has a, reposo, uh, a repo on GitHub, the changes should be submitted to the BPF mailing list because libbpf is integrated into the Linux kernel source code. And for that, we have to post our patch to the BPF mail, mailing list. So it's not really LKML, like the topic kind of, the, the, the subject of this talk is kind of off, but please forgive me. It's, I, I think the process is close enough. So what I'm gonna say next should apply to LKML as well. Posting patch to the BPF mailing list. So if you have not worked with mailing list before or you, you just heard of it for the first time, it's essentially a discussion form, kind of like Stack Overflow and like Reddit, except all the exchanges are done through emails. And there's quite some specific requirement for, for sending emails, especially sending patches there. The first and foremost, the most important part I would say is the email subject because that's what everybody sees at the first sight. And the email subject actually contains two parts. The first part uh, enclosed in the square bracket is a prefix. Inside the prefix, you have to specify that I'm sending a patch by, by saying patch 
And secondly, you have to specify what tree this patch should go into. So tree is essentially just what repo that your patch should go into. For that, you can look into the BPF mailing list uh, developer guide, and it tells you that there's actually two BPF kernel tree. The first is BPF, the second is BPF next. Now, since I'm sending a fix, I see that BPF tree itself is for fix. That's where I'll send. So I use BPF for the tree. Up next is the version. So what version of the patches, patch set are you sending? So this is the first time I'm sending this patch, so version one. And for version one, you actually can just skip it. So that's fine. Now we move on to the last part of the prefix, the sequence number. This is also, this is mainly for a situation where you're sending multiple patches at once. And in my case, in this simplified case, I'm only sending one patch. So one over one, I can also skip that. This leaves me with the prefix of patch BPF. And up next is the component part. So for component, I find the easiest way to find it out is just to look at the git log and put in your file and see what other it says, the component it is. So in this case, it's pretty clear it's just libbpf. And that's what I use. So last and probably the most important part is the actual subject that you'll be using. And I find that it's really hard to come up with a good subject like just right away. So what I do is I actually skip this part and postpone it until later. So I'll move on by generating a patch, well, actually the email file that I'll send for my patch. This can be done with a git format patch. And recall that we already have a prefix that will be used in our emails. So I gave it to the, this command with the uh, subject prefix. And I also specify which commit it should output. Since I'm using the last commit, I'll just use head minus one. And this will give me an email file that I could further add, edit. Fire up the editor. And this is likely what you'll see. So what I need to do next is to fill it up with some commit message. And I find that usually when sending patch to BPF mailing list or LKML, I find it's pretty nice to have some template. And the template that I'm using is basically abstract followed by content followed by summary. So abstract is just very short sentence saying what this does and why I did this. The content will go into a bit more detail on the reasoning behind this change and followed by the summary that includes everything. Since it is a fix, I usually get into more specific details. So I'll say what the symptom of the issue is and followed by the root cause. And so for, for my patch in this case, this is what I'll say for the abstract. I look at what my changes. So I replace a field with a helper call. So that's what I'll say. I say this commit replace this field with this helper call. And as to the why, well, because I want to fix a heap of flow issue. So that, that's it. Now I can move on to the symptom. For the symptom and for OSS fuzz, I actually have a very good summary and that is the sanitizer report. Paste it in and the maintainer usually will have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And for the root cause, I use the EIF spec content a bit summarized and reduced, but that makes a pretty good root cause discovery. And for the summary, I just go over the reason again, followed by the changes I made. And now I can go back to fill the title. So the subject is, firstly, it has to have the components, so I add it. But I also need the main part. 
And I find that it's usually pretty easy to extract something for the first part, the abstract of my comment message, and just stick it there. So in this case, I decide to say, uh, this just replace some field with the helper function called. Equally, I, I think I could also say that this commit fixed a heap buffer flow issue, but that felt a bit too general. So in this case, I thought it's better to be more specific and see my changes. Now we're almost done. You have to still add some more things. So first is the certificate of origin. So any patch you send to LKML, the kernel source code, must come with a certificate of origin. Secondly, it would be nice to say that what this patch fixed. So the main use for this is like distro maintainers like me or others can discover that, oh, there is some issue with the code base I'm releasing and apply this fix to some older release product. And it, it really helps with the whole process. And thirdly, if you have some link to some external reference, like this case, it's, it'll be nice to add it. And I had to do a bit of trick to make it work, but if I had the time, I'll talk a bit more about this. So uh, up next, before the sending email, you also have to configure uh, your git config to properly send the email. And my configuration, my setup is basically msntp plus uh, mute oauth to script. And with that setup, I can actually send all the patches through Outlook. So if, if my setup could work with Microsoft, it probably could work with any setup out there. So it should be worth trying. And with that, I can send out the email with the send email command as the name implied. So you have to send it somewhere, which is the BPF mailing list. And it's also nice to have a dry run to test your script, uh, test this, whether it works before actually sending out. So once you make sure that everything works nicely, you can actually send out the message. And to be, to be very like complete, this would be the command line I would actually use. So the one on top actually just sent to the BPF mailing list. But ideally you want to send also to the maintainers, not just the list. So just to make sure they get it and they see it. So for completeness, this will be the one I'm actually using. But I think if it's like a very simple fix and just one shot, I, I think nobody will shout at you by sending just to the BPF mailing list. And when after your mail is sent, it start it start a code review. In my case, the libpf maintainer says that there is something that bothers him with the code I have, and he suggests some fix that I should do. So I does the change. I make the allocate. I make the use of helper function closer to the actual allocation as suggested, and commit amend format patch. This time it's the second time I'm sending my patch. So I had to add version two and also slightly added the patch. So when you're sending another version of your patch, it, you need to specify what changes are made. And usually this is done in something called the cover letter. So when you're sending multiple patch, you'll send the first kind of like a summary of what your whole patch set does. But since I'm only sending a single patch, in this case, I'll put my changes just before the stats of the diff. And this way I have something that the emails reader would see, but it also would not make into the final Git repo. And so I say that what I, the changes I made, I actually uh, go against a different tree and here's are the changes I've made and then send it. So that's pretty much the, I guess, the end-to-end -end process of going from finding an OSS first issue into having your patch accepted at the Linux kernel source. And if you're interested, I think there's a lot of opportunity for contributing 
mainly against OSS fuzz, but of course also against Linux kernel. But the slide will be mainly about OSS fuzz. So OSS fuzz actually try to build and fuzz a lot of different target. And right now there's actually quite a bit of target that are failed to build, which means they're not getting fuzzed. So if you want to help, you can look into that. And there's also a tracker for all the OSS uh, fuzz reported issue. That's also something you can work in. And there's some more resources, uh, mainly on fuzzer and on sanitizers. And that would mark the end of my, I guess, the, the main talk. So yeah, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. So any any feedback or, or questions? Um, this is just some feedback. I wor work on the team that um, supports open source fuzz, OSS fuzz. Um, if you, there is money that Google will give you if you um, help improve OSS fuzz. So um, check out the um, Bug Hunters page at Google and you can learn more there. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I forgot to mention. Yeah, I, I think there's some, as mentioned, there's some bounty. Let's see if I can open. So you re really get paid, I think, quite a good sum of money if you try to integrate it into the existing, um, existing, existing open source project. The first one, right? Yep. So is there some like threshold or some requirements for the open source project to be considered part of the part of the award award program? So uh, like there, there it will get um, checked for the criticality of the project. Um, so like just picking some random project no one uses won't get a bounty, but you can get up to 5,000 US dollars for really critical projects. All right, thanks. Also add like this is also includes if you scroll down uh, improving coverage as well which is yeah. yeah so so one thing I think I learned while looking at fuzzer is that besides issues like crashes or or memory sanitizing issues, Fuzzer could also be used against to find some logical errors, I believe. So I think one, one thing that math related library could be fuzz is that if you have two impl implementation of the same library and you could try to give them the same input and if they, they give you different result, that means something is wrong and you this is a logical issue that someone should look into. All right, so I guess that sums up my talk. So um, if you don't remember anything, just remember that you can get paid by integrating OSS Fuzz into important open source project. And thank you everyone.